Hey guys, Rob here again, and I'm uh, going to be doing a tutorial on perspective. Now, uh, perspective is a pretty big subject, so I'm going to be breaking it down into little manageable parts. This first step is going to be talking about horizon lines. Uh, they're super important, and uh, I figure they are the basics behind perspective, so I'm going to start with that. Anyway, so um, I've picked an example photo here. Uh, for me to explain exactly how to identify the uh, horizon line in any given picture. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. Uh, a horizon line is basically where things vanish off into the distance. So uh, you can see uh, I'm going to mark out over the next couple photos uh, the perspective lines or the horizon line in a nice bright yellow color that should be easily identifiable. Uh, so like I said, on this photo, this is the horizon line. On this picture, the horizon's here. And on this one, the horizon is here. You guys may start to be uh, noticing a pattern here. It's not too hard to identify a horizon line. However, placing your horizon line can be very important. Depending on how high or low you place your horizon line, will determine whether the camera is looking up or down on a scene. See here, if I move the horizon line up, it appears as if there is more ground space than sky space, indicating that the camera is looking down on the scene. Whereas if we place it low, there's very little ground to be seen, but the sky is pretty vast, and uh, this would indicate that the camera is looking up. I've made this diagram here to illustrate my point. Now, as you can see, if the camera is represented by the image of the camera here, and then this triangle represents the field of view, this being the picture, you can see at the moment that the camera is so pretty much straight across, and there is lots of sky and uh, only a little bit of ground viewable in the scene. Now, if I aim the camera down from here, All of a sudden, the, uh, the horizon line is much higher up in the field of view. Now, this is just a simple diagram. Obviously, the perspectives aren't correct, but uh, I think you pretty much get my point. So, horizon lines are going to be used for a bunch of different stuff, but uh, their main purpose is to place uh, vanishing points on. Now, a vanishing point, like I said before, is a place where... Uh, lines from an object, if you extend them off into infinity, they'll meet at a vanishing point. And all vanishing points are going to be placed on the horizon line. So I'm going to show you a quick example of what I'm talking about. If I put this vanishing point here and extend guidelines off into the distance, I can use those lines as references for me to sketch this cube here. It's a little wonky, but uh, it serves its purpose. There you go. So that is the basics of how to use a vanishing point for drawing perspective. But um, what I'm going to teach you now is a little trick uh, for using vanishing or using a horizon line without having to draw in vanishing points. And this is a trick you can use to size objects that are the same size if one is pushed further back in the distance. So let's say you have a character. And the character is placed on the horizon line. And you need to draw a second character further back in space. And that second character is the same size as this character. So what I'm going to do is if I place another one behind him, the point where the horizon line intersects, both characters will be in the exact same place. So, uh, you know, here it's going through his chest, it's going to go through the chest of the character further back. Uh, this is a constant. Assuming that the characters are the same height, this will always happen. Uh, so, I mean, you can use this for uh, drawing objects that are uh, reference points for, let's say there's, a, there's an object behind him that only goes up to his waist. You know exactly where that will line up on the... Uh, on the horizon line in comparison to the character that you've already drawn. You can see if I draw 
uh, guidelines off from a vanishing point to find the vanishing point here, then you can see that it, it does indeed extend off to the proper vanishing point. And so my sizing has been correct. And if you want to draw another character, a third one off in the back, this would be how tall they would be in there, so on and so forth, off to infinity. Okay, so, uh, but this will also apply if I move the vanishing point. Let me just move it uh, up higher here through his head. Now, you may notice right away that uh, the character behind him looks really short now, uh, if you're thinking of that as the horizon line. It looks like a child in the background. But if I raise the character up to the proper point there, there you go. Now he just looks like the guy who's the same size off in the distance. So uh, this is, like I said, a pretty, uh, pretty cool way of being able to uh, determine size of things in, uh, in the distance using a horizon line without having to go through all the hassle of, uh, of drawing perspective lines, uh, reference lines, um, vanishing points, all that. So here, I'm just going to use this in a practical way. Let's say I need to draw a door in the background. And a door is roughly about this size on a person. So I can extend, find the vanishing point from my characters. There we go. So that's the vanishing point on the horizon line. Now if I draw from the vanishing point out to the points of my door, I can find out exactly how big to draw my door in the background. Now the more you practice this, the, uh, the better you're going to get at drawing things uh, off in perspective without having to use guides. But when you're first starting out, this is a fantastic tip to kind of head you off in the right direction to make sure that uh, all the objects in your scene are scaled correctly.